Welcome back to The Bible is Art, where we explore the literary artistry of the Bible. And in this week, we're talking about the literary art of the whole book of Exodus. The book of Exodus is organized into three sections that follow the Israelites from Egypt through the wilderness to Mount Sinai. So the literary structure looks like this. Israel in Egypt, Israel in the wilderness, and Israel at Mount Sinai. Exodus is a journey narrative, like many of the great stories from the Odyssey to the Aeneid to the Divine Comedy, Pilgrim's Progress, and the Lord of the Rings. And the central idea is that the physical journey symbolizes a moral, spiritual, intellectual, or theological journey where the travelers begin in one moral or spiritual place and move to another. In Exodus, Israel begins in slavery and journeys to freedom, Sabbath rest at Mount Sinai. And the symbolic structure works both vertically and horizontally. Horizontally, they move from Egypt to Mount Sinai one location to another miles away. Vertically, they begin low at sea level at the Nile River and move up to a mountain. The Israelites begin as servants to Pharaoh and end as servants to God. They begin in Pharaoh's house and end in God's house, the tabernacle. They begin by listening to Pharaoh and his laws and end by listening to God and his laws. They begin by building for Pharaoh, remember the storage cities of Python and Ramses, and conclude by building God's house. So the author has written all these symmetries that develop throughout the journey. But the structure of the story goes one level deeper. But to understand the symbolism of why the author has structured the book into three sections, we have to review some of the details of the book of Exodus. In Egypt, Israel is enslaved and God calls Moses at the burning bush to deliver his people. God then sends plagues in all manner of ele elements, including raining down fire and delivers his people through the sea. In the wilderness, on the way to Mount Sinai, God leads his people in a pillar of fire and cloud that illumines their way. Israel complains about the food and God provides them with manna, bread from heaven. And when they arrive at Mount Sinai, the fiery glory cloud rests on the mountain and the elders travel up into it to have a meal with God. Moses receives the law as well as the instructions for the building of the tabernacle. The climax of the book, the thing that gets the most space is the tabernacle, the detailed instructions and then the actual account of the construction. The tabernacle occupies 40% of the book of Exodus. 16 out of 40 chapters. So why all this attention? But not only did Moses spend a lot of time talking about the tabernacle, he designed the book to be a literary tabernacle. Just like the book of Exodus is organized into three sections, geographically designed as Israel journeys from Egypt through the wilderness to Mount Sinai, so the tabernacle is organized into three sections through which you may journey. The courtyard, then the holy place, then the holy of holies. But the numerical connections are only the beginning. The events throughout the book correspond to objects in each section of the tabernacle. For instance, in the courtyard, there's an altar for offerings and the bronze basin for washings. These correspond to the fire of the burning bush or the plague of fire from heaven and the crossing of the Red Sea. Moving one section in to the most holy place, you have a lampstand that provides the only light in the dark tent, just like God's glory cloud provides light to the Israelites. 
You also have a table with bread on it, just like God provides bread from heaven, the manna in the wilderness. And lastly, in the Holy of Holies, you have God's glory cloud resting on the mountain, as well as inside the Holy of Holies, the same thing. You also have the ark that includes bread, just like the meal that the elders ate, as well as tablets containing God's word, remember the Ten Commandments, just like God giving the law and the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai. And as a literary tabernacle, the reader journeys into the tabernacle throughout the reading of Exodus. And this would have been precious to the Israelites because no normal Israelite was allowed in the holy place. And only one Israelite, the high priest, was allowed in the Holy of Holies and only once a year. So literary access to the tabernacle was the only access they had. But there's more than that. You see, by incorporating all the aspects of the Israelites' journey into God's house, all their experiences, even the bad ones, find their place in God's house. All these are gathered together into one harmonious architecture, adorning the interior of God's home. And that, my friends, is why the Bible is art. Thank you everyone for uh, checking out the video this week. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. If you'd like to support the channel, that would be lovely. You can do so at uh, patreon.com slash the Bible is art. Um, and uh, I thank you so much and I will see you in the next video.